Hi, and welcome to this week's session where I'll cover how to use Azure Active Directory with Azure NetApp Files. This is really useful if you have a Greenfield project where you may not have an existing directory or for scenarios where you can't easily extend your existing domain services into your Azure deployment. I'll take you through the basics of Azure AD and show you how to connect this to Azure NetApp Files, enabling you to provision enterprise Windows file services in just a few minutes. Let's get started. So let's just start with what is Azure Active Directory? Now, Azure Active Directory provides the identity services for your Azure environments. It keeps a list of your users, your groups, and any other relationships that you have in Azure. It's the native directory that you'll use for most of your resources. And why that's handy is, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have an Active Directory that exists today, either on-premise or you do not want to run your own Active Directory servers within Azure, then it's very handy to, to use directly. Now with Azure NetApp Files, of course, the advantages that we have here is that we can plug directly into both bring your own Active Directory, so your typical on-prem deployments, and also Active Directory via Azure Active Directory domain services. So if you notice here on the left, I have Azure Active Directory domain services. What this does is it allows your Azure Active Directory uh, to connect via IP into your VNets. So for all intents and purposes, any virtual machine I have that can route to that VNet where these direct, uh, domain services are deployed can then authenticate against my Azure Active Directory. So with Azure NetApp files, what you'll see is if I go into a particular region, I'm using Western Europe right now. Um, at the time of recording, we're at nine locations globally. I have a, my Azure Active Directory connection pointing to the DNS that's provided from my Azure AD. I can also see my uh, DNS name. And then the other things that I specify here, for example, are what name should my ANF volumes have? So my Azure NetApp files volumes, when I deploy them, will have a prefix. They'll also have a random string afterwards, um, which is to do with how we load balance behind the scenes. In addition, and probably one of the most important parts to remember, is that if you are deploying, make sure that you specify the OU of AADDC computers. That's because with Azure Active Directory, you don't have full permissions to go and provision everywhere as you would on-prem. There are only two containers you can provision in, uh, AADDC users and AADDC computers. So be sure that you have specified this correctly. And of course, beforehand, you need to make sure that you've got a user that has permissions, has the correct role to be able to add computers into Azure Active Directory as well. And if we just take a quick look at that, then uh, in terms of roles, you'll see here, I have uh, Azure NetApp Files um, user that is also part of the AAD DC Administrators Group, and that's really important. So once you've gone and done that, and you've added your uh, connection string in the Azure di uh, Active Directory connections here, then it's very simple. If I want to go and provision enterprise class SMB services, I simply have to say, I don't know, users home directories, something like that. Um, I pick the right size or the right performance that I need. So let's say I'll do two terabytes and um, I then pick the virtual network. So I can go to one of my hubs, my spokes. I have a, an AKS cluster in here as well. I'll just put this in my hub for now and ensure that you have your subnet deployed. I pick SMB, so this is the important part, and of course I pick my Active Directory that I've just set up. I give it a name, and if I want to, I can do my tagging, and then I can simply review what I've selected. And this will typically take somewhere between two to three and a half minutes to deploy. So in just a few minutes, our deployment's now complete. We can go and see that by going to the resource, so here we have all the details of our new SMB share that we've created in Azure. This is entirely built as a PaaS service for you. There's no infrastructure for you to manage. There's no patching that you'll have to do. 
um, and as you can see we have successfully provisioned this using Azure Active Directory um, as the directory of choice for SMB. So finally one last thing if we take a look at our Active Directory via the Active Directory Administrative Center we can see straight away that the volume has been successfully added as a computer object as, as we would any other Windows file server in our environment. So you've successfully learned how to use Azure Active Directory with Azure NetApp files. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and if not, let us know why. See you for the next video.